Welcome to this Black Hat Fast Chat. I'm Terry Sweeney, contributing editor to Black Hat, and I'm joined now by Joe Slowick, senior security researcher for Domain Tools. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Glad you could make it. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So we're, we're talking about ransomware, uh, sort of the, the more successful uh, uh, stepsister, I guess, of, uh, of, of spam. Um, certainly very pervasive. It's uh, also obviously highly profitable. Um, are some organizations more at risk for ransomware than others? So like any question when it comes to the realm of cyber threat intelligence and cyber risks, the answer is in short, it depends. <laughs> um, having said okay, that, Okay, fair enough. No, but having said that, I would say the risk is aligned with the sensitivity, especially the time sensitivity and availability of operations. So if you have a organization that you know, maybe they have to do uh, run cash registers by hand or something along those lines for a bit, that's highly disruptive, but it's not a existential crisis. Whereas a hospital or something uh, similar, yes, they might be able to operate for a period of time in a degraded state, but the impacts are far greater. So understanding how ransomware related disruption passes through to operational impact is key. It seems like hospitals and educational institutions have really borne the brunt of, of so many, uh, I'll just say successful ransomware attacks. Yes, they unfortunately seem to be in a sweet spot, at least for the bad actors in terms of criticality and then uh, defensive readiness. And not to say that there's anything that these organizations have done deliberately wrong, just lack of resources or uh, other issues have, have made them especially enticing and vulnerable targets. What changes, if any, are you anticipating with ransomware to improve or increase its monetization? Mm -hmm. So I think we saw, you know, we, we've observed a number of changes in operation over time from sort of one-off per user encryption events to briefly a period of self-propagating ransomware to then the sort of big game hunting activity. More recently, we've seen the introduction of data theft and data leak as part of operations. And while it's getting more extensive, uh, I think we haven't seen the worst of that yet. Although I say this, and we just had a post from the Reval gang on what are allegedly documents from uh, Apple uh, related to some of their product lines. So I would anticipate ransomware authors to continue to innovate with respect to what sort of urgency or uh, added uh, impulse to actually pay up the ransom instead of recovering information. And whatever works along those lines, I think we can expect something along those lines in the near future. Okay. Um, talk about how uh, ransomware operations compare to other types of intrusions in terms of how the adversary behaves, what they do once they infiltrate the network. How does that work? Well, really, we've seen an amazing convergence, it seems, in attacker tradecraft between penetration testers, state-sponsored espionage actors, and criminal gangs executing ransomware operations in that you know, we see a fairly standard combination of initial access techniques, whether that's through phishing, brute forcing, or credential guessing on external authentication portals, or like we've seen, you know, we're talking in late April right now with a couple of network device vulnerabilities recently announced through uh, exploitation of external facing services. And then once inside, uh, while certainly some custom tooling does emerge, we often see a quick migration to publicly or commercially available tools like Mimikatz and Cobalt Strike as the items that really facilitate lateral movement. And then it just becomes a distinction of what's your intention uh, as part of the operation. Are, are those tools you mentioned essentially the keys to the kingdom? Uh, when used properly, they remain amazingly effective. Mimi Cat's now for 10 years, it seems, and wow. Cobalt Strike certainly being very popular for the last couple of years. Okay. The, the, the question of the hour, of course, is what can organizations do either to prevent ransomware attacks or mitigate uh, the effectiveness of them uh, should somebody open one of the bad emails? Right. And my first suggestion is one that already presumes that bad things can and will happen, because I don't think we could ever, from a cyber perspective, ensure 100% complete security, and the risk will always be there. And so sure. 
planning for those eventualities uh, and having as part of disaster recovery and business continuity plans, items that relate to cyber induced disruption, such as ransomware is pretty critical and making sure that those plans are vetted and tested and kept up to date. Uh, we want to avoid that situation though, as much as we can. Yeah. And along those lines, it seems hackneyed and cliche to say so, but a number of items that fall into the so-called security basics still remain quite effective, whether that's strictly filtering out email attachments that include active content, such as office macros uh, or similar content, or mm -hmm. all in really striving to achieve application allow and block listing in environments to significantly reduce attack surface, at least in certain areas of the environment. Uh, a lot of these sort of configuration heavy items can have really significant payback uh, in enhancing the security profile of organizations. And because these are fundamental aspects related to modern operating environments and operating systems, they're typically available to most organizations as well with a little bit of upfront pain in properly configuring things. Um, some great advice for uh, handling the, the, the scourge of the moment ransomware. Joe, thanks for joining us on this fast chat today. Yeah, no, again, thanks for having me. Pleasure chatting. We've been talking with Joe Slowick of Domain Tools. This has been Terry Sweeney for Dark Reading. Join us again for this next Black Hat Fast Chat. We'll see you soon. <laughs>